Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we are covering comparative advantage and terms of trade. Now before we get started, make sure you go down to the description below, click the link and grab this PDF that I've provided for you. We're gonna be going over this while we cover the material. Now this is probably the most difficult concept in all of unit one, so you really, really wanna follow along. Now the objectives for today are to use production data to identify comparative and absolute advantage, understand the law of comparative advantage, determine mutually beneficial terms of trade, and then identify the gains from trade. Absolute advantage is simply the ability to produce something better than somebody else or do some task better than somebody else. So given the same amount of resources, whoever can do more, produce more, complete more, has the absolute advantage. So in the example I've provided on the worksheet, we got Ryan and Shamoon. They are both completing janitorial tasks, cleaning bathrooms, cleaning classrooms. In one hour's time, Ryan can clean one bathroom or he can clean three classrooms. Shamoon in one hour can clean two bathrooms or he can clean four classrooms. So based on this table, who has the absolute advantage in cleaning bathrooms? It would be Shamoon. He can do two in the same amount of time it takes Ryan to do one. Who has the absolute advantage in cleaning classrooms? Also will be Shamoon. He can clean four in the time it takes Ryan to clean three. Now when asked to explain this, you simply have to state that one can do more than the other given the same resources. And then by adding in that four is greater than three, kind of solidifies your answer and guarantees you're gonna get it right. Now with comparative advantage, this is a little bit different. Simply because you have the absolute advantage in something doesn't mean you should be producing it. Comparative advantage means that you have the lower opportunity cost in producing something. You sacrifice less to produce something. So it reflects the relative opportunity cost of production. So let's take a look at this example here. We have Ryan and Shamoon again. We now need to find the opportunity cost. So we are given production data so we know it's going to be what we sacrifice divided by what we produce. So Ryan's opportunity cost for cleaning one bathroom is gonna be three classrooms. His opportunity cost for cleaning one classroom is gonna be one third of a bathroom. Shamoon's opportunity cost for cleaning a bathroom is gonna be two classrooms. And the opportunity cost of cleaning one classroom is gonna be one half of a bathroom. All right, remember, sacrifice divided by what you produce when it comes to output problems. Now, who has the comparative advantage in cleaning bathrooms? So we have to look at the data. We see that Shamoon sacrifices two classrooms when Ryan sacrifices three. The lower opportunity cost has the comparative advantage. So Shamoon has the comparative advantage in cleaning bathrooms. Now who has the comparative advantage in cleaning classrooms? We look at the data. One third bathroom for Ryan, one half bathroom for Shamoon. It's going to go to Ryan on this one. He sacrifices less to clean a classroom. So why or explain it? He cleans a classroom at a lower opportunity cost, and then you throw in that one third is less than one half, and it solidifies your answer again. Now the law of comparative advantage states that if you have the comparative advantage in something, you should be specializing in that, and then trading for everything else. So according to this, if we trade, if we specialize in what we have, we are able to consume beyond our production possibility frontier. So total production in the economy will increase. Now, let's look at the example with Ryan and Shamoon and show exactly how this benefits us and allows us to consume beyond the production possibility frontier. So what we're gonna do to these tables first off is change it from output to input. So we're gonna change the production data to minutes to clean one bathroom and minutes to clean one classroom. Okay, so we got Shamoon and Ryan. Both of them are tasked in this high school that they work at with cleaning five classrooms and two bathrooms. They both have to get this much done. Now, can they benefit by focusing on what they have the comparative advantage in and trading for the other task? So it takes Shamoon 75 minutes to clean those five classrooms and 60 minutes to clean the two bathrooms for a total of 135 minutes. Ryan, it's gonna take him 100 minutes to clean the five classrooms, 120 minutes to clean those two bathrooms for a total of 220 minutes. If they trade, on the terms of trade of two bathrooms, four or five classrooms, let's see how things pan out for them. Now, Shamoon now has to clean four bathrooms. He has the comparative advantage in bathrooms. Ryan has to clean 10 classrooms. The four bathrooms that Shamoon is going to do is gonna take him 120 minutes. 
He was working 135 minutes before, now he's only working 120 minutes. He's gained 15 minutes that he can do something else. He could clean another uh, classroom. He could get something else done. Uh, Ryan, on the other hand, he's down to 200 minutes. He was at 220 before, he's got another 20 minutes. He could do some extra tasks. So both of them have extra time. This allows them to consume beyond their production possibility frontier. Now the second example looks at Paige and Lauren and their little bakery businesses that they have started. They produce pies, they produce donuts. Now instead of being an output question like the first one, we have a, what's called an input question. They have given us the resources to produce, or in this case, minutes to produce each product. So when we look at the absolute advantage, we have to look at who does it quicker. But let's get the opportunity cost first. So in the time it takes Paige to produce one pie, she could produce two donuts. Remember, when it comes to input questions, it's what we produce divided by what we sacrifice. So 10 divided by five gives us two donuts. In the time it takes to produce one donut, she sacrifices half a pie. Lauren's opportunity cost for one pie is four donuts, and her opportunity cost for one donut is one quarter of a pie. So who has the absolute advantage in making pies? This is gonna go to Paige. She could produce a pie in 10 minutes when it takes Lauren 20 minutes to produce that same pie. Now, when it comes to B, who has the absolute advantage of making donuts? Neither of them do. This is because they both produce the exact same amount in the same amount of time, or it takes them the same amount of time to produce one product. Their productivity is exactly the same. Now, who has a comparative advantage in making pies? This is gonna go to Paige. She only sacrifices two donuts to make one pie when Lauren has to sacrifice four donuts. So she has the lower opportunity cost. Who has the comparative advantage in making donuts? Because Paige has the comparative advantage in making pies, we can almost assume that it goes to Lauren, but the chart is gonna give us that same information. She sacrifices less with one and quarter pie compared to Paige's half pie. All right, now, a little bit about imports and exports. Imports are what we bring into our country typically, but when we talk about these trade problems, it might just imply that it's the person receiving the good in the trade. Exports are what we ship out. The person that has the comparative advantage in a product or in a service or a task is going to export the products. The person that does not have the comparative advantage or the discomparative advantage has, is taking the imports. So keep that in mind as we answer these questions. So here's our opportunity cost. Uh, who is going to export the pies? This is gonna go to Paige. She has the comparative advantage. She sacrifices less than Lauren for the production of one pie, so she's going to produce them, specialize in them, and ship them out. Who's gonna import the donuts? Well, we know Lauren has the comparative advantage in production of donuts, so she's gonna be the one exporting them. So once again, it's gonna be Paige that imports the donuts. So keep in mind the wording. Now, the big part of this video is the terms of trade. So what this is, is the relative price of imports. All right, how much are, is it gonna cost us to get these to our country, to get this to our person? If I trade one pie for five donuts, that's the terms of trade. Every time I want one pie, I gotta give five donuts. Or every time I want one or five donuts, I gotta give them one pie. That's the terms of trade that exist. Now the domestic price is referenced kind of once in a while. This is the opportunity cost of producing it yourself. The, so I can produce one pie or three donuts, let's say. That's my opportunity cost. The three donuts to produce the one pie, that's also my domestic cost. I can produce this or I can produce this. Now when it comes to terms of trade, and I'm gonna explain it on the next slide, it must fall between the opportunity costs. And it'll make sense once I get done with that next slide. But an individual will not trade an item if the price is higher than the domestic cost. I will not trade it to you if I can produce it cheaper myself. If the trade-off, my domestic cost, is cheaper than the price you're charging. Okay, let's look at an example where we're gonna find a mutually beneficial terms of trade. So we have Paige, we have Lauren. Lauren is going to be producing what she has the comparative advantage in, Paige is gonna be producing what she has the comparative advantage in, and we wanna find an agreement that's going to benefit them both. So Paige can, on her own, produce a pie or two donuts. That's the trade-off she has. The opportunity cost of that one pie is two donuts. Lauren's opportunity cost is four donuts. She can produce a pie or four donuts. So keep that in mind as we're talking about this. Now we wanna find out what's gonna be mutually beneficial for both of them. So Paige has the comparative advantage in pies, 
and she wants to trade Lauren for some donuts. So Paige offers her one pie and Lauren says, okay, I'll give you one donut for it. Now Paige looks at this and says, well, I, my domestic cost of producing a pie is two donuts. So I could sacrifice this pie for myself, not produce this pie and produce two donuts instead. It's not worth it to me to give you one pie in exchange for one donut. I can do that myself. I can do better than that myself. So Paige says, how about you give me five donuts for that one pie? Then I'll be better off because that's more than my two. Lauren looks at it and says, that's, that's more than my cost. I can sacrifice four donuts on my own and produce that one pie. So you have to come up with a deal that is lower than my domestic price. So then the three pie or one pie for three donuts is offered. And this falls between the opportunity cost. Paige is getting more than she could do herself. It's greater than her two donuts that she could produce. And Lauren is paying less than her own domestic price. Remember, she would have to trade four donuts to get one pie if she traded off production. Here she's just giving three. So the three donuts falls between the opportunity cost. It's greater than the two donuts that would cost Paige. And it's less than the four donuts it would cost Lauren. Both of them benefit. And inversely, one donut for one third of a pie would also be an acceptable terms of trade. Okay, so question G we figured out on the last slide. What is an acceptable terms of trade? In this case, it was one pie for three donuts. Realistically, it could be anything greater than two, one pie for anything greater than two donuts, but anything less than four. That would be acceptable, but one for three works very nicely. So let's flip flop a little bit and assume that both Paige and Lauren are self-sufficient. That means that they're gonna consume only what they produce. Their consumption possibility frontier is the same as their production possibility frontier. So Lauren produces at point B and Paige produces at point A. So let's take a look at Paige's point A. She is, at point A, she is gonna produce four pies and four donuts. Lauren at point B is gonna produce two pies and two donuts. Okay, just keep that in mind. It's gonna help us understand how we can benefit from trade and consume beyond the production possibility frontier. Now we jump down to I, it says, let's assume both Paige and Lauren exclusively produce the product they have the comparative advantage in. Paige produces at point D and Lauren at point C. If they trade based on the terms established up in C or in G, um, let's see how they benefit from this. So, we're gonna say two pies for six donuts to make this a little clearer. That is one pie for three donuts, it's just two pies. So let's start with Paige. If she gives up her two pies, right now she's producing six pies and zero donuts. So she is gonna produce at point D, but she's gonna trade two of those pies away and get six donuts from Lauren. So now she's at point P. And this allows her to consume beyond her production possibility frontier. She can consume four pies and six donuts. Lauren, on the other hand, is going to trade those six donuts to Paige in exchange for two pies. So now Lauren, as well, at point L, is consuming beyond her production possibility frontier. She can consume two pies and six donuts. So both of them are better off. It's mutually beneficial trade when you trade between the opportunity costs. Now let's summarize what we covered. Trade allows people to specialize and specialization is what allows us to be productive because we can focus in on one thing or less things. Economic growth will occur because of trade. We, it causes lower prices and it allows us to consume beyond the production possibility frontier. Now self-sufficiency on the other hand, no imports, only domestic production, there are gonna be no gains from trade, and this means that our production possibility frontier will also be our consumption possibilities frontier. All right, I hope you got a lot from that video, and please check out the FRQ practice dealing with terms of trade, as well as the other videos that I provide. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.